This week for EMN5, we're going to talk about blast injuries. And these injuries mostly come from a combination of the heat and the kinetic energy that's caused by the chemical combustion. So let's talk through what happens when you have a blast. So first off, you get this blast overpressure, a shock wave, basically, kind of a blast of energy. Then you get a blast wind, which is essentially just a huge gust of air. And then lastly, you have this negative pressure. And if we were to graph this all out, it would look something like this. So first you have this huge spike, that's your shock wave or blast overpressure. Then you have a blast wind, which is followed by this little bit of negative pressure dip. So a couple things you have to take into account when thinking about how much injury you might see from your blast is the distance from the blast and then what your surroundings are. So distance matters a lot, actually. The blast energy decreases with the cubed root of the distance, which basically means if you're 10 feet away from the blast, you have eight times more blast injury than if you're 20 feet away. So it really makes a big difference. So next you have to think about what are your surroundings. So take, for example, an underwater blast. Do you think you'd have more or less injury from that? So you're actually going to have more injury. That's because water is incompressible. Um, you're going to have a faster blast propagation and also a slower dissipation of that energy. What about if you're in an enclosed space, like inside a room? This is a meth lab. So you're going to have more injury again. Um, so let's go back to this graph we saw before. This is what it looks like in an open air explosion. And this is what it looks like in a closed space. So you can see this blast overpressure. Um, this energy bounces around the room in an enclosed space and causes multiple of these blast pressure waves it can result in a lot of injury. And same thing can happen even just next to one wall. Um, again, that energy bounces off the wall and comes back and you end up with kind of twice the amount of blast. Now there's four types of blast injury categories. We have primary, which is from the blast shock wave or overpressure. Secondary, which is from flying debris. Tertiary, in which the victim themselves gets displaced. And then quaternary, which is kind of a miscellaneous category. And each of these categories can cause various different injuries. So let's start off with primary. I think it's one of the hardest to understand. Um, so this primary injury is caused from the blast overpressure, that shock wave. And it mainly affects spaces in the body that have an air fluid inner space. So for example, the ears, the lungs, the GI tract. And there's a couple different forces at work here. So for example, let's talk about the lungs. This has the interface of the capillaries and the alveoli as your air fluid interface. So first thing that happens is when the shock wave hits, you have this very dense, non-compressible vessel with the liquid inside right next to the alveoli which has compressible lower density air and what happens is when that force hits it displaces the vessel into the airspace and it usually actually ruptures the vessel and it compresses that air a lot so then the second thing that happens is that you have this compressed air which then explodes back outward again and so this causes a couple things it's going to probably rupture the membranes and it can cause a mixing so you end up with blood leaking into the alveoli which results in ARDS and acute lung injury and you have air leaking into the vessel which can cause air embolism. All right next is the secondary which is from flying debris and this causes a lot of penetrating trauma and, and also some blunt trauma and it's actually the most common injury and that's because the debris flies further actually than the shock wave and this is where you're going to see a lot of shrapnel type injuries and one thing to remember is even if you have kind of a small entry wound that doesn't really look like a big deal in a blast injury you really need to have high suspicion that there could still be some extensive internal injury from these wounds. All right, third we have displacement. Um, this is when the victim is actually propelled from kind of the rush of air. Um, this is where you see a lot of crush injuries, a lot of blunt trauma. You're going to see fractures, amputations, and a lot of time brain injury as well. And then quaternary is kind of this miscellaneous category. This is where you lump into the, the burns, smoke inhalation, chemical injuries, and also structure collapse. There's a lot of different things lumped into that fourth category. So when you're thinking about the ABCs, specifically in field transport, make sure you get an early airway. For B, under the breathing, think of these patients with a lung injury kind of like an ARDS patient. So when you're setting up a vent after you've intubated them, think of using ARDS type settings and make sure you look for and treat any pneumothorax. In circulatory, we're obviously going to get good IV access, give them fluids and blood as needed. And these patients especially, you have to look out for hemorrhage. They have long bone injuries, amputations, significant wounds. So make sure you do appropriate dressings, place tourniquets as needed, and put limbs into traction. And the last thing I think is really important is keep doing serial exams on these patients. Keep examining their belly, keep checking their pulses, look for evidence of compartment syndrome, keep doing neurovascular checks, um, because they may have some occult injuries that you could catch early if you keep doing serial exams. So that's it for this week's blast injury. Here's some references, and thanks for joining us on EMN5.